friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebirds, Little Star, Sweet Dreams, Word Buddies Jungle, and Balloon Buddies. So I stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to start with the koala, and I'm going to do her in some warm grays. I googled pictures of koalas, and the warm grays seemed like the most accurate match. So I'm going to use W00, W1, W3, and W5. I prefer to color darkest to lightest, so I'm going to begin with that W5 and lay in some shadows wherever I think that they should go to give her body a little bit of definition. And then I'll start to blend that out with the W3. I like to keep the face nice and light. That's why I'm putting my darker shadows toward the top of her head. That way I can keep the highlight down on the lower part of her face. So I'm going to keep blending. Now I'm using the W1, just bringing that color down on her ears a bit, bringing that lower on her face. I'm going to fill in her arms and her side and her little haunches there with that shade. But I will use that W00 to just fill in the rest of her ears, the lower part of her face and her belly. And I did decide to do a second layer on her. I felt like the contrast wasn't quite there. I do this a lot with my images. I don't always show it on camera because I usually um, trying to stick to a certain time limit for a video. But for today, since most of the images were in a simpler color palette, I thought I would go ahead and leave this in the video since it, um, I just had a little bit more time with today's card. So just to give you an idea of how that looks with that second layer, I do think it makes a big improvement on the blending and the saturation. And then I'm going to color that little bucket to look like a metal bucket. So I took away the W5 and just used the lightest three shades. And I did two layers on that as well, leaving a highlight down the center so it looks nice and shiny. Then I'm going to switch to some pink shades. I'm using RV10. RV11 and RV13 for the two little birds. I am creating a baby card today because I became an aunt again yesterday. So I have a brand new little niece. She's just one day old and I am so happy and excited to meet her. I can't wait to hold her. Um, she did have to spend some time in the NICU yesterday, and mom was having some difficulties as well, so I haven't gone to see her yet. I wanted to give them both a little bit more time to recover, but everybody's doing really well now, and I'm super, super excited to meet her and um, just greet our newest family member. So I needed to make a card for her. I wanted an extra special card today. So I pulled out these super adorable images that I just love. I'm so excited to have an excuse to play with them. I did color the bow in pinks as well. I just darkened it up by adding in RV14, blending out with the RV13, and then the RV11 is the lightest on that. And then I'm going to move on to my clouds and I'm going to have those be pink as well because I want them to reflect the sky that I'll be creating, which is also going to be pink. So I went with very, very pale shades. I used R000 and R00. So I'm using the R00 first to add just a little bit of definition to the bottom edge of the clouds and then a few places on the top edge as well and any little lines that are drawn in the middle to make them look extra fluffy. And then once I have all that laid in, I'll bring in the R000 and just softly blend that out with the side of the marker, kind of feathering that color into the white. So they still look white, but they have that pink tinge on the edges that reflects the sky. So I did go back and add just an extra touch of that R00 in a couple of places to give a little extra definition. I wanted to have those creases be just a little bit more shaded. So I did that quickly and I did not bother to blend that out and just added a little extra of that. And I threw a little bit of that on the bird's bellies as well. And then I went back to the W5 to color in the bird's beaks. 
For the moon and stars, I decided to go with very pale yellows. So I'm using Y quadruple zero, Y triple zero, and Y11. And that's just gonna help them look like they're glowing. So I'm using a little bit of that Y11 first. I'm gonna concentrate on just the moon because it's such a large image and then I'll do all of the stars at once. So I'm blending out the Y11 with that Y triple zero, and then the Y quadruple zero, and then leaving a little bit of a white edge on the inner part. And then for the stars, I'm going to use the same shades, but I didn't use all three just because there wasn't room to fit them all in. So I just started by adding a touch of that Y11 to each of those stars. And then I'm going to blend that out with the Y triple zero and just leave a little bit of white space and let that be. And then I will trim these images out with their matching dies. For the background, I'm starting with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock that I've trimmed down with the Hello Bluebird Nesting Deco Mini Slimline. It has that beautiful detailed edge on the sides, which I love. And I'm going to color this pink, like I mentioned. So I'm starting with some Spun Sugar Distress Oxide ink. I want the color to be concentrated in the center of this panel and then fade to white at the edges. So I am not adding any color right along those edges, just keeping that color in the middle. Once I have the spun sugar laid in, I'm going to darken it up with some Kitsch Flamingo. So I will blend that down the center as well. And it had a little bit of some saltwater taffy on there. I think I used this blending brush to mix the two in the past. So it kind of added a bit of a peachy tone to it. So I am going to blend that out with the spun sugar again. And then I really liked that peachy tone. So after I add in another layer of that Kitsch Flamingo, I'm actually going to bring in some saltwater taffy and just add a touch of that here and there as well. And I'm really not going for a super blended look for this particular card. A lot of times I want to smooth out that blend, but on this one, I actually wanted there to be different spots of dark and light areas so I didn't blend it out completely. I am going to distress this though by adding some water to this panel, just picking that up with a paintbrush and tapping it off the side so I get a nice splatter effect. And I'm going to let this sit for a few seconds and interact with those distress oxide inks and then I'll blot that up with a paper towel. And there you can kind of see it kind of wicks the color away in little spots. And I wanted to have just a bit more of that in a couple areas. So I did it a second time. And then I'll blot that up once again. See how that's looking. I decided I liked that, but I did want to also add some distressing with the inks. So I'm going to press some of the spun sugar onto the block. And I'm also going to take some of the saltwater taffy and I'll mix those up with a little bit of water to make them more fluid. And then I'll pick those up with that paintbrush once again and tap off the sides just like I did with the water. This time I'm making sure to also get some of that ink into the white space along the edges just to make everything look a bit more cohesive. So I'll do that with the sponge sugar first and then the saltwater taffy. And then once I'm done with that, I also wanted to add some gold flecks. So I'm going to bring in my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors and I mixed up this soft gold shade and I will add some of that into this panel as well. It's gonna dry back super shiny and pretty and I think it looks really nice when you tip the panel into the light. And I think it ties in nicely with this star nighttime scene. And then I can set this panel aside to dry completely. Once it has, I will pop it in my Misty and I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment. So I'm treating that with my Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool and then I'm going to ink that up with Versafine Onyx Black ink. So if I want to heat emboss something in black, this is the way I prefer to do it. Rather than doing it in clear ink and adding black embossing powder, I prefer to use a black ink that is 
stays wet like this VersaFine Onyx Black and then coat it with some clear embossing powder. And that way you don't get any little extra granules of that black embossing powder going where you don't want it. So I coated that with the clear embossing powder and then I'm going to heat set that with my heat gun. I heat it off to the side for about 30 seconds and then I bring it to the back and the front until all of that powder is melted and shiny and is gonna really make that sentiment stand out and also give it a little bit of texture. Then I created a card base. This is six by seven inches and then I scored it at the three and a half inch mark. So it ends up being six inches by three and a half inches when the card is closed. And then I'm going to stamp on the inside using Lawn Fawn's bubblegum ink. So I did a little koala from the word Buddy's Jungle, and then the stars are from Little Star, and the sentiment is from Sweet Dreams. So I am taking a piece of pattern paper from the Echo Park Hello Baby It's a Girl 6x6 pad, and I'm going to trim that down to fit the entire card front. So it's six inches by three and a half inches and I will glue that to cover the card. So we have that nice delicate plaid pattern that I think works perfect for a baby girl card. Then I can bring in the focal panel and I decided to pop that up on some foam tape to give it a bit of dimension. So I'm gonna peel off those release papers and center that on the card. And then I can pop that down into place and bring in my images. So I'm going to start by adhering the moon in the top left corner. I'll go ahead and add that so that it is flat on the card. And then I'm going to lay out the clouds so that I know I have them positioned just where I want them. I'll kind of play around with exactly where they're going to go before I adhere them permanently. So I'm just making sure that I like the way that they're gonna look. And then once I'm happy with that, I decided that I'm going to pop those up with some foam tape as well. Normally I keep cards that I'm going to send through the mail to one layer of foam tape, but since I'm hand delivering this card, because I'm actually going to go see my new niece in person, uh, I decided that I could go ahead and use two layers of foam tape because I wasn't gonna have to worry about it getting all crumpled up in the mail. So. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the three clouds and I will glue the little koala to the center cloud right above that sentiment. And I did add just an extra tiny little bit of foam tape to her ear that was kind of sticking up above the cloud so that that would be fully supported as well. And then I'll add that third cloud down at the bottom. And then I can grab my uh, little bow tie which I'm going to use as a hair bow and tuck that over one ear. I think that looks super, super sweet. And then I'll add my two little birds. I'm gonna put one on the top cloud, kind of looking down at the sleeping baby girl koala. And then the other one I'm going to add with the little bucket of stars on the bottom cloud. And I'm just using liquid glue to adhere all of those since they are going completely on the clouds which are already popped up. I did add a little bit of foam tape behind the largest of the stars to give those some dimension as well just so that all of the stars aren't exactly on the same level. It'll just help some to look a little bit closer and some to be pushed back a little bit farther in the scene. So I'm just peeling off the release papers on those and kind of scattering the large stars across the scene first. And I did peel off one of the little foam tapes because I wanted the baby koala to be kind of holding on to a star, like that song, like catch a falling star and put it in your pocket. So I just thought it'd be nice for her to kind of be cuddling that as like her little lovey. So I added that to the cloud where she's sleeping. And then I added one more of the large stars up at the top. And then for the small stars, I'm just adding a dot of liquid glue directly on the card panel. 
and then popping those in place and I'm just kind of sprinkling them here and there until it looks as full as I want it. I definitely had more stars than I needed but I just wasn't sure so I made sure to stamp out extra just in case but there comes a point where it's just starting to look over full and I didn't want to do that. So I just added them until I was happy with the way it was looking. And of course this card needed a little bit of glitter to finish it off. So I'm grabbing my favorite Stardust Stickles. It's just perfect for a nighttime scene. So I'm adding it to the shaded areas of my moon and stars. So not covering it completely, but adding enough of that that it will really shine when you tip the card into the light, which I'll show you here in just a second. We're also going to have a bit of shine from that gold metallic watercolor and the heat embossed sentiment as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. I am super excited to give this to my brother and sister-in-law and meet my new little niece. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love to hear from you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products I used will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below so you can click the drop down and check any of those links out. I'll also add two extra videos here on screen in case you'd like to keep watching. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.